and we're recording. In this video, I'd like to give you a brief hands-on introduction to Git, which is the version control system we're going to use in this unit. And um, we'll see more and more of it unfold uh, throughout the videos, and you'll interact quite a lot with the version control system in this course. Uh, but this is just going to be a really quite basic uh, introduction to start with. So first of all, let me create a directory. And let's call it version control and this is where I'm going to do today's demo and let me create a just a text file uh, that's going to be the thing that I'm going to add into my repository uh, that's going to kind of represent my code but it's very simply for this particular video and so let's create it using an editor called VI, uh, which I'll need to tell you some things about, and there's a reason for that, which you will see in a moment. And uh, let's just create some file.txt. And now I'm going to go into insert mode in VI, and I'm going to say, here we go around the mulberry bush. Uh, escape from insert mode, save that, and now I have a file called some file.txt. OK, so far so good, but that's just editing a text file. Let's create a Git repository here. Let's say git init. And so now it says initialized empty git repository in this particular directory. But you'll see there's this dot git here. So dot, uh, dot git is where the git version control system keeps all of the information about this repository. And uh, if I go ls minus a, uh, you'll see it there. So there's the text file and there is .git. Now that's quite useful. That means if I want to move um, my code and this repository, then all I have to do is take this version control directory, the one that contains .git and my source code and some file.txt, etc. And I can just drag that folder where I like onto a USB stick, another folder, another drive on the same computer. And I've taken my um, source code repository with me. All the information is in there. Um, now, let's say git status. This is something you're going to find yourself doing a lot to find out, all right, what does git think is the current status of my working directory, the, the code that's in the directory, and uh, my, um, my, my repository. So it says I'm on branch master. This is my initial commit, and I have some untracked files. And it says use git add to include in what will be committed. Now, before I do that, very, very important. I'm going to say git config user.name and I'm going to give it my name. And I'm going to say git config user.email and I'm going to give it my email address. The reason this is really very, very important for you, the version control history is going to save all of the changes to everyone's work. And uh, in this particular unit at UNE, uh, you're all going to be working on a uh, single large code base. You're going to be working with a lot of other students. Uh, so how am I going to find your work? Well, one of the ways I'm going to find your work is finding the changes that you made in the repository. And to do that, so that I can find them, you need to have told Git who you are so that when it commits your changes, it commits that you made those changes. And that means I can go in and find them. Uh, if you haven't set your email address, it's going to default your email address and your change is going to be quite hard to find. All right, now uh, back to the demo. So let's go git add some file.txt. And now if I run git status, it says that I'm on branch master. This is still the initial commit, but it says changes to be committed. So I have staged this change so that it is going to be committed the next time I run git commit. Let's let's run git commit now. So this is going to make a commit. This is going to say, all right, I'm, my, my code is now in a new happy state. I want to share these changes. I want to commit these changes into uh, my version history as stored in the .git directory on my computer. And when I hit enter, up pops this editor. Editor, And this is VI, and it's an editor that many students are unfamiliar with. Um, it's present on almost every Unix system and almost every Linux system. 
and usually it is the default editor so if you run a command that wants to bring up a text editor this is the one you're going to get and uh, that means you're going to need to know a little bit about it and the first thing to say is that it has two modes it's got a command mode that it's starting off in so if I was to start typing the characters wouldn't actually appear yet if I want to type into this document I need to put it into insert mode and the easiest way to do that is by pressing the I key and you'll see that now that down here it says insert VI is waiting for me to insert some text and so let's say initial revision and if I want to get out of insert mode back into command mode let's press escape and insert has disappeared and I'm back into command mode now suppose I actually decided no I'm not ready for this yet um, I don't want to commit my changes suppose I just want to get out of the editor uh, well to do that uh, one of the e most um, clear ways of doing that if I press colon and so you'll see down here that I get a little colon prompt for commands and I can say Q for quit and normally if I just do Q for quit it's going to tell me oh I've got some um, changes uh, you know I, I've typed some text here and uh, so it doesn't want to quit and lose my text but if I go colon Q exclamation mark yeah throw away my changes uh, I'm going to exit the editor and in this particular case uh, it's going to um, it, it, it's not going to make my it's not going to save my changes so here I am and it still says on branch master initial commit changes to be committed um, so because I didn't save when I exited uh, it's not done the commit all right let's go and do the commit again and let's say um, uh, added some file dot text and instead this time I'm going to press colon and instead of Q exclamation mark I'm going to go save and quit so I'm going to go W for write Q for quit so write and quit and that's going to save the text file which in this case means it's going to give it the, the, the commit message and the commit is going to succeed and here it says one file changed one insertion create mode and uh, now if I go git status it reckons on branch master nothing to commit working tree clean which means that the files here you know some file.txt the files currently in my working directory are the same as the current commit in the branch that I'm on in the version history that's stored in the .git directory all right now let's have a quick look at the log so git log will show me the change history of my code and here it says that I've got a commit and it's given me a a really rather long number here and that's the commit hash it's called so git rather than numbering each of the commits one two three four five six instead it computes a hash that's based on the content of all the data and the history of all the commits so far so this number should be um, should be unique uh, to the situation of having committed some file.txt uh, with that particular content and as the first commit and here we've got my author information so it says William Billingsley wbilling at une.edu.au and that is the information that was captured from the you know git config user.name git config user.email and so that is why that was very important for me to set so that it could record it against that commit all right let's um let's duck back to talking through some of the slides in the next video let's um, stop the initial bit of the demo there and we'll come back to doing more with git in another video